Let's pray. Lord, we're so grateful, O oh Father, for today. Thank you so much, Lord, as you continue to teach us your ways, Lord God, teach us your word. Thank you so much, Lord God, for guiding us. Guiding the imperfect people, Lord God, to have a relationship with you. Teach us, Lord, to humble our hearts as we listen to your word. Mold us, Lord God, and may, um, may we obey, Lord God, when there are things in your word that cause us to take action. Help us, Lord, to be able to see this inside of our hearts, Lord God. The things that like disobey say more, Lord God. The things that does not honor you. Help us, Lord, to humble our hearts. Help us, Lord, to look at you. To fix our eyes on you, Lord God. And so, Lord, we pray that you continue to guide us today. And we humbly submit to you this morning in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Good morning. Okay, nasa imong tapat. Good morning. Kaya morag. Morag tag ka ng dilong kita, no? Kamusta man mo? I wanna share to you a question. Question, do it so far. Morag, exam ba? Why, Lord, am I suffering? Have you ever asked that question? Why, Lord, am I suffering? Why, oh, Lord, why am I suffering? Ano man, Lord, nag-suffer ko, Lord? Ano man, naglisod ko, Lord? Isa nakatry og asa na question. Or maulaw lang mo. Okay? Well, take courage because as you read the Bible, you will see that even sa Bible, po noong story of suffering it was never mentioned nga once you become a Christian, you will no longer experience suffering. Wala gingon sa Bible nga, pabaptize lang, okay na. Wala gingon na na. Mahapsay na mong kinabuhi. No. Actually, we are even called to carry our cross, our sufferings with us as we follow Christ. We are told that we will face trials, persecution, pains as we follow Christ. And that means suffering is universal to each and every one. That means para sa tanan. That means this question, why Lord am I suffering, is actually applicable to all of us. In this world, we are all suffering. Madato, mapubre, klasmi tatana. We have our own sufferings. We have our own baggage to carry. Now my question is, is it wrong to ask the Lord, why am I suffering? Because there are people when basta mo share na ka that you are suffering, there are people who would Tell you, ano nag suffer man ka? You're serving the Lord. Is it wrong to ask this question to the Lord? Why am I suffering, Lord? Of course not. You can ask this question and be honest with the Lord. You can cry out to the Lord. And today we're going to learn about Paul's journey, padung sa Rome. How he, as a Christian, trusted the Lord in every storms. I will share three things to remember as a Christian. As a follower of Christ, when you are in a storm or when you are suffering. And let's begin in verses 1 to 3. In verses 1 to 3, when it was decided that we should sail to Italy. If you can remember in the previous chapters, see Paul for two years na preso just because of people who can't decide. And so Paul requested to talk to the emperor, Emperor Nero, na naasa Rome, sa Italy. If you can also remember two years ago, the Lord said to Paul that he will also be a witness sa Rome. That he will also share kung kinsa si Lord sa mga tao nga nasa Rome. And this promise was two years ago. Acts chapter 23 verse 11. Let's just remember. Saan yung promise? That night the Lord stood by Paul and said, Don't be afraid. You have given your witness for me here in Jerusalem. And you must also do the same in Rome. But the Lord never said kung unsa nga journey. The Lord never said nga two years day ka mapriso before ka maabot sa Rome. Ang destination ni Paul was clear. The Lord said, I will bring you to Rome. Another thing that's clear, God's purpose to Paul was clear. You will be a witness. You will tell them who Jesus is. You will tell them who the Lord is. But ang journey as to how, the process as to how, it was never mentioned. But on our verse, in one verse 1 to 3, it proves that the Lord is true to His promise. After two years, padulong nag The church in Acts continued to grow because of people who submits to the Lord. 
It doesn't matter kung unsa kalisod ang journey. What matters is, in this journey, you are with the Lord. That in this journey, you are obeying the Lord. But along this journey, sometimes dili i-mention ni Lord kung pila ka years, kung unsa sa mga, unsa mga struggles yung mong i-go through, kung unsa mga sufferings kay mong atubangon, mga storms. For Paul, it took him two years to be in prison before ang fulfillment ni Lord sa iyong promise. The church in the book of Acts continued to grow because of people like Paul and other Christians who obeys the Lord despite of the uncertainty sa ilang journey. Now for me, sa akong journey as a pastor, as a Christian, it was not an easy journey. And I know some of you siguro mas grabe pa ang na-experience kaysa sa kuwa, kaysa sa mga natigil ninyo. And some of you probably are just starting their journey. And we can learn, kang Apostle Paul and other Christians, we can learn sa Bible, kung sa day response nila as they wait for the Lord's promise. We can learn, kung sa response nila as they face storms, as they face sufferings in obeying the Lord. And humans as we are, lahi-lahi tag response to sufferings. Because lahi-lahi man tapag padako. But for Christians, as we obey the Lord, it changes our response. Now let's try to evaluate at self. How do I respond to suffering? How do you respond to suffering? How do you respond to life storms? Life storms like problems at school. Problema na sa work, problema na sa balay, problema na sa kwarta, away sa familia. We have our own problems. But how does a Christian, a follower of Christ, respond to these life storms? To these sufferings? Okay, check sa ta. How do you respond ka? How am I responding to these kind of things? When it's taking so long, when you need to wait pila ka years, the same as Paul, when you've been suffering for very long years, when you're carrying the burden for pila ka years, how do you respond? And our generation, ganahan tag tubag na dayon, na aday tubag. I want it now. I want uyab karun dayon. Are you sure that's the Lord's will? I want to be rich now. Ganaan ko madato dayon. Karun dayon. Manang upatad taog? Swear test. Loto, bahalag sugal, basta kay naa dayon. Bahalag sayo, basta paspas ang result. Most of our response, we try to look for our own ways, our own solution. BDO. We find ways. If problema sa balay, ang uban nato, we, we walk out. As I've mentioned even before pa, there are a lot of youth that no longer want to stay inside their house because it's not a safe place anymore. Where do you find them? Out in the streets. Asa ka na, mas feeling safe pa nila sa gawas kaysa nasulod sa balay. If problema sa tsakwarta ang uban nato, bisan asa na lang, bisan unsan na lang sudlan, it doesn't matter kung makahimaya ba ni Lord or not. Ang uban, isugal na lang ang nabilin ng kwarta. Expecting ang murag basing mga sultihan. Ang ending, na naghanan ng utang. Nadungangan na noon ang problema. Sometimes, there are problems na kita rapoy ng buhay. Problems that are the result of our actions. Nga nung nagsuffer ta, it's because of our own fault. Example, nga nung wala namang kuy kwarta, ay, naday kuy shopping pa doon. Diba? See? Aside, Anna, there are also problems that doesn't need a solution. There are problems where it requires us to just be still and trust the Lord. But this can only happen if you are with the Lord. We Christians are not exempted sa suffering sa world. Kung sa bagyo pa kita tanan na bagyuhan. But pili ka, do you want to suffer with or without God? Pilika, when you are suffering with the Lord, you know that there is hope. Mubito tong living hope. You can have peace, even if pilaka years pa na, even if unsa pa na nga storm, because you can trust the Lord in the process. You can trust His promise. Paul trusted the Lord. Bisan asa Lord, basta kuyog ka. Bisan asa Lord, basta ka, you are the captain ani nga journey. When you are suffering with the Lord, you know nga na purpose ang kaninga journey. That you can trust God sa iyong mga plans. But when you are suffering without the Lord, that's going to be sad. Nga it will be a lonely journey. 
ikaw, ikaw right try to solve si mong problem. And sometimes, you will try to push people away. In our verse, if you will notice, Paul was never alone. When it was decided that we should sail to Italy, we went aboard the ship. We sailed away. We. You will notice that Paul was never alone. Means a appeal ang writer's acts. Now, ang writer's acts is look, puyuk sila ni Paul padung Rome. If you can remember during his imprisonment for two years, he was never alone. He continued to be with fellow believers. Even mga people nga layo sayo, they were praying for Paul. And in this journey, there are people willing to go with Paul sa prisuhan. When you trust the Lord with your life, remember that you are never alone. You are never alone. In this world, if nai problem ang isa katao, try to observe. If nai problem ang isa katao, usually, mag-inusara ka. Di mo tingog, nga nag-struggle na dahi, di mo share, nga nagka-problema na dahi. Nga no ka? Number one, maulam. Especially kung ang problem kay because of sin. Mawaw ka mo share sa kanta pa, nabay kawatan ng motobran. Another one, nga nung mauaw because of pride. Mauaw ka kay dapat kaya ni Muni. Dapat di sila makaibaw nga nagkaproblema na ka. Dapat happy ya po. Dapat strong ka. Dapat if pangutanon ka kung kamusta ka inyo na rin mo, okay ko. If pangutanon ka kung kamusta yung relationship with your family, dapat yung tubag, okay lang. Yung relationship with the Lord, dapat tanan, okay. Two reasons rin na. But the gun paglaing reasons. And there are also problems that we cannot understand. That we ourselves don't even understand ourselves. And if you try to go back sa creation, when Adam and Eve sin, ila na-realize nga once masakpan sila ni Lord, that's going to be a big problem. So unsa sila kibuhat? May tago sila. Trying to keep everything a secret. But the Lord knows. Our sin goes all the way back to Adam and Eve. That's how sin affects us. And we do the same thing at ibuat nila whenever we have a problem. We keep it a secret. On the other side, sad. What if na gusto mo share sa sa muha sa iyang problem? Like na ni doll ni mo ni open up ni mo ni text or ni chat. Pwede ko magigstorya ni mo kuya or ate. Kena ako yung problema. Are you the friend who would spend time listening and helping the person to process the emotional baggage? Or are you the person who would just say, na ako'y kagulingong ang problema, dugang-dugang lang? Asa mang kasadwa? Are you the friend who would sit down and listen and spend time with the person? Or are you the friend who just, kaya rin mo? Friends, in this world, we never natay problems. Most response is to separate yourself sa mga tao around you. And so, if mo reach out ni mo, that means to say that he or she feels safe ni mo. That means to say he or she needs help. Take it as an opportunity to help others. And sometimes you will meet people who doesn't care. People who will mind their own business. People who, who will judge you, who will leave you behind at times when you badly need a company. And you know, unsay pinakasada na sometimes these people are our families. Kadugo. But we Christians are different. We are a family in Christ. And dili tungod kay kadugo ta. We are a family, dili tungod sa physical nga bahay, but we are a family because of our relationship with the Lord. Something that cannot be taken. United by something that is above us. Greater than human blood. Not an ordinary blood, but the blood of the Son of God. You know, once I designed the Lord a Christian family as family of believers, Galatians chapter 6, verse 2. Help carry one another's burdens. And in this way, you will obey the law of Christ. Help carry. Tinabangay. Wala gingon diya nga atong imarites ang struggle sa ato ang co-believers. The text never said anything about marites. 
or chismisa na tong iyang burden sa inyong fellow believer. It never said nga libakon ninyo. It never said nga mag ta kung sa ang giingon. Help. Tabangi ninyo. Magtinabangay. Sa Tagalog pa, kinama tayo Tagalog rin. Mark. Sa Tagalog pa, magtulungan. First word. Magtulungan. That's how the family of the Lord should look like. Na ay times that we will fail as human beings, but the Lord never fails. He will give you encouragement through other Christians na willing mamina, willing mo carry sa imong burden. And it's not only look ang kuyog ni Paul in verse 2. Aristarchus, a Macedonian from Thessalonica, was with us. Aristarchus was with them, another Christian. And then on verse 3, Julius Caesar, the officer of the Roman army, he was kind. Buutan siya ni Paul. Nga sa tanan prisoner si Paul ready allow him to go and see his friends. And we wonder ka ba, gigamit ang tanin ni Paul as an opportunity para makaiglas. Ako ato, lakaw ko rin. Dagan ba? But when you know that it is the right direction kung asa ka gilid ni Lord, you will follow Him regardless if people will say na what you're doing is foolishness. Before ko na pastor, there are some people who doubted my direction. But I know na kuyog na ko si Lord. Para sa uban, foolishness. Sabi saya pa, binogo. Para sa uban, dili logical nga decision. In my heart, wala ko nag-doubt. Because in my heart, I know that the Lord is the captain of my life. And Paul continued to obey the Lord. Paul was very sure. Dili ko mo go against. Nga gitagaan ko yung aning liberty to go out with my friends. Nga mutakas lang ko. No. Paul trusted the Lord. He followed the Lord. And so on verse 4 to 8, we went on from there and because the winds were blowing against us. If you try to take note, there are a lot of things, there are a lot of words na great difficulty sa kaninga passage. We're blowing against us, great difficulty, um, finally arrived the town of Snidus, the wind would not let us go with great difficulty. As you read this, immediately makayangon ka, grabe sa difficulty sa ilang journey. Church, there are situations that you cannot control. Kana na experience ni Paul, literal nga storm. Diligid ni mo makontrol, but you know unsa sa'yo mo makontrol? Your response. What do you do? How would you respond kung kani ang mga struggles sa mong life? Masuko ba ka? Maglagot ba ka? Magsapot-sapot ba ka sa journey? Mudaot ba ka? And mind you, this is not just a one-day journey. Days. Siguro nabot pag weeks. Kung sa man yung response, magsapot-sapot ka for pilaka days, for one week, because of something that you cannot control, that's draining. And there's another term, ano, tawag na doon sa church. Sungog. Sungog means tempting you to sin, especially in time nga nag-serve ka ni Lord. Now, I just want to add this. I know wala ni sa tong topic, but since we are talking about sungog, let me share to you when ang sungog may tabo sa relationships. Especially if nag-serve mo together sa imong wife, husband, or sa imong partners, or friends, the devil will find a way to distract you and tempt you to sin. And whenever madamo sa sungog, I encourage you to talk it out sa imong kaubat. You need to remember that. If nakasakit na ka through words or anything, see to it that you talk about it. You process it. Dili kayo forget about it like wala na itabo. Remember, we are human beings driven by emotions. If nakasakit na ka, it may cause trauma to the other person. So please, process things out. Now going back to Paul. For Paul, sure siya nga mauni will ni Lord. And since kay bao man ta nga si Lord mismo ang ningon ni Paul's previous chapter, that means kay bao ta nga regardless sa difficulties, this was part of the journey. 
As I've mentioned a while ago, there are some people who will doubt your direction. And sometimes, these people are waiting for great difficulties kung may tabo sa iyong life. Na makaingon sila, awa, naglisod kay, di man na mao ang will ni Lord God. Awa si tati, nagpastor, awa, naglisod. Lord. There was this one church in Argao na sila na reach out atong December. Family. Na Christian ang family. Then niabot ang odet. You know what happened? Namatayan sila ganang. You know what say, gingon sa silingan? Nibalin mo na sila religion? Nga namatay, munang namatay lang anak. And I just praise God nga kaning pamilya wa nagpadala sa temptation. Wa nagpadala sa sumum sa kaawin. Church, we should understand this. In this life as a Christian, there's no smooth sailing. There will be sumog, there will be temptation. Anywhere you go, no problem. So work, sa school, sa church, sa mong family. Remember that the Lord is with you. There will be storms, but remember that the Lord is with you. Ayaw pa sa distraction sa storms. Because sometimes sa atong life, na yung mga moments yung makaingong tabas, yung diliwin ni Lord. When you trust the Lord with your life, remember, napuyog ni mo siya. You are with the Lord. Your identity is with the Lord. Fix your eyes on the Lord, not on the storm. If makaremember mo katong time na kuyog ni Jesus sa mga disciples who are storm, na natuog lang si Jesus Christ, Nagipukaw siya sa isa ka-disciple, ang tubag ni Jesus Christ. In Mark 4, then Jesus said to his disciples, Why are you frightened? Do you still have no faith? It was for his disciples to trust the Lord. Jesus was asking, Wag yan po may pagtuo. After sa tanan na akong pag-lead, sa tanan na akong miracles, hindi pakita sa iyong life, after sa pag-lead na ko ni Mudri sa church, wag yan po may pagtuo. Sometimes we are like the disciples. To focus the storms at long life. Forgetting that we are with the Lord. Forgetting our identity. And when you focus ni Lord, ma-remind sa gasta ng gibuat niya sa iyong life. Na kaya gay na ko itong sa unang experience. Karun pa kaha. And every time na yung ibalik-balik na reminder sa iyong about kinsa si Lord, it will increase your endurance sa mga storms. This is what James said. James chapter 1, verse 2 to 3. My friends, consider yourselves fortunate when all kinds of trials come your way. For you know that when your faith succeeds in facing such trials, the result is the ability to endure. Verse 2, James said, consider yourselves fortunate. Ang kaninga word ng fortunate? Consider with great joy. Ana si James, consider it all joy if makaface ka line line na trials. Nga man, because the result will increase your endurance. Nga if na na sa storm, makasalig ra ka ni Lord. Si Paul, sa kadaggan nga na-experience niya nga trials, while he, when he trusted the Lord, Paul is sure that the Lord is with him. Paul is sure that he is safe with the Lord. Taas kayo yung endurance ni Paul. And ang kaninga journey is not just for Paul. Look in Aristarchus sa mga Christians. Ang kaninga journey kay with other prisoners, with Roman soldiers, daggan nga mga tao nga unbelievers. On the following verse, in verse 9 to 12, We spent a long time there until it became dangerous for us. Dangerous for the people. And then in verse 10, Men, I see that our voyage from here on will be dangerous. Paul was giving warning. When you focus on the Lord, when you remind yourself that you are in the Lord, it changes your response sa mga suffering sa life. Nga even if na mga problem, you can be at peace because you are with the Lord. Nga even if na mga sufferings, di ka maraton. Instead, you can think clearly. But there are a lot of times na bisan gani ako maraton mga gani. And kaninga mga changes, dili lang ikaw ang mag-grow sa mong relationship with the Lord. There will be people watching you. People who observes your actions, your response to sufferings. And it also for people who are with you to see kung kinsa si Lord sa mong life. These people might be in the storm with you, journeying with you. 
sometimes there are sufferings in our life so that other people will be able to see the glory of God. People who will be able to witness the power of the Lord na nag-work sa mong life. Each sa tua have different storms of life. For some, they are abused, traumatized, and probably before ka na Christian, you ask, why, O oh Lord? Are you even real? Tinood ba ka, ka Lord? How can I believe you when kanita na nakasakit na akong na-experience? When kanita na nakasufferings, imong di-allows kong life. And honestly, I have asked these questions. Nga naman, Lord. Kung tinood ka, nga naman. Later on, when I became a Christian, now I understand we are living in this sinful world. Surrounded by sinful people. A world who disobeys the Lord. A world without guidance. Now that I became a Christian, I was able to understand that my past, it was an instrument for others to see the glory of God working in my life. That my past proves that the Lord is real, that the Lord is true, that the Lord, is, that the Lord can heal, that the Lord can transform a life. Paul was pe people who doesn't believe the Lord. And God continued to use the life of Paul to display how powerful he is. And by the end of this chapter, the Lord truly displayed His glory. The same with us, the Lord can use our life to lead people to Him. Dili kinahanglan nga bright kay ka. Dili kinahanglan nga nakagraduate yun ka. Dili kinahanglan nga dapat train yun ka. Think about this, verse 10. Paul was giving advice. Piniriso. Di advice ng captain and ng commander. Siguro the centurion was asking, he was thinking, you're just a man without any knowledge of sailing. Nga nung mo ang kunin mo. Probably, yung I think, I've been a commander. I've seen this happening and we can finish this. You know what you call that? Pride. Pride becomes because of knowledge. And because of this, because of title, wala siya nito ni Paul. But for Christians, it's different. When we submit to the Lord, your title doesn't matter. We are all servants. Sa Greek pa, slave. Dulos, slave of the Lord. What matter is, are you going to obey the Lord's leading? When you trust the Lord with your life, remember His guidance. For Paul, he was a prisoner. But yang experience, sige na siyang travel bisa nasa. And you know what? In Paul's letter sa Corinthians, he said, three times na ko na naka-experience o ka ng kaunlod nga gisakyan nga barko. Paul knows kung unsa ka dangerous ang ilang pag-travel. But the people around ni Paul trust their own selves. Na kaya nila. Na trained sila. Nga nangaraan na sila nga. Sige, oh, pangisda. Sige, sakay sa barko. For Christians, it's different. Tanan na tong actions, we ask the Lord. Lord, sakto ba ni? Lord, will mo ba to? Tanan na tong actions, we ask the Lord for guidance. And we are so blessed to have the Bible. To have God's very word to guide us. In any storm, this will be our guide. In any suffering, the Bible will be our guide. In any darkness, this will be our light. That's why in our journey with the Lord, this guidance is very important. Ako lang question is, tigbasa ba ta sa Bible? Kamusta man yung devotional? Kamusta man yung obedience ni Lord? When was the last time na nakadigo ka? When was the last time na nakadiscipleship ka? Do you now see? His guidance and our obedience. As we do our devotional, na yung mga devotional ng mukol to action. Example, go and make disciples. Ang question is, are you obeying it? Pastor, sige kong devotional. That's good. How about mga commands? Say mong gidivo. Gi-obey ba ni mo? Ganaan kong divo naman, Pastor. Di lang ko ganaan mo Friends, useless kayo ang guide kung di na ito gamito, kung di na ito sundun. And later on, we will eventually see the effect. As you read the entire chapter, what Paul said really happened. Nga basig na mamatay sa tuwa, nga kani, basig maguba itong barko. The people there, they did not listen to Paul because he was just a prisoner. 
Church, there's wisdom with what you know in this life based on experience. But there's greater wisdom in trusting the Lord. Because the, Lord's, the Lord is the origin of wisdom. Kang Lord gikantanan ng wisdom. Proverbs chapter 1, verse 7. To have knowledge, you must first have reverence for the Lord. Stupid people have no respect for wisdom and refuse to learn. Reverence means deep respect ni Lord. You want knowledge? Honor, respect, and love the Lord. Seek Him first. Then the Lord will guide you in each step in your life. Church, maybe some of you are in a season na puno storm. Maybe some of you are suffering. and Maybe some of you are still traveling alone. Puno pains, don't know where to go. Trying things, trial and error. Let me share to you this. The Bible tells us that the Lord already prepared our destination. And not only that, the Bible also tells us that the Lord already gave us His guide to know our purpose. The question is, are you willing to let go of your life steering wheel and give it to the Lord? Are you willing to let the Lord be the captain of your life? Are you willing to submit into the Lord's will? If you trust your life to the Lord, Tinood, we may not know the process. We may not know the process as to how we can arrive into our destination. But we can be assured that God is with us. That in this journey with the Lord, we are never alone. We are part of a family. We are with Him and we are guided by Him. Seek the Lord. For he knows everything. He knows the future. He knows his plans for you. He knows his purpose for you. Let us pray. Lord, we are so grateful, O Father, for who you are, Lord. Indeed, we are God. We are nothing without you, Lord. Indeed, Lord, without you, Lord, we will be lost. Indeed, Lord God, without you, Lord. Lord. Without you, Lord, we make a lot of mistakes, Lord God. We hurt other people, Lord. And we ask for forgiveness, O oh Lord, for the things that does not glorify you. Humble our ways, Lord God. Teach our hearts, Lord. Let us see, Lord God, the things that we need to do, Lord God, for your glory, Lord. Guide us always, Lord. In every storm, in every sufferings, Lord God, remind us of who you are. Let us remember, Lord God, help us remember, O oh Lord, that you are with us, that our identity is in you, that you continue to guide us, that your word is already here, and we just need to open it, we just need to read it, we just need to ask, Lord God, for your guidance in choosing every decision that we make in our life. Help us, O oh Lord, to see the direction where you want us to go and mold us for your glory. Protect your servant, Lord God. Protect us. That we continue to encourage one another to carry each other's burden and to pray for one another. We submit to you everything, Lord God. We submit to you every lives, Lord God. Lord God. I don't know, Lord, what are the struggles that they have in their own family, in their own self, in their studies, in their workplace. But I know for sure, Lord God, that we can trust you. That we can communicate to you. That we have a Father who listens to us. And we're just grateful, Lord. That we can come before you. And humbly ask, Lord God, for forgiveness. And humbly ask, Lord God, for guidance. Thank you, O Father, for who you are. For reminding us your word. That in any storm, Lord, we are to trust you. That in any storm, Lord, we are to be reminded of our identity in you. That in any storm, Lord God, in any suffering, we have a guide. Thank you, O Lord, for all these things. Thank you so much for your love. And I pray for all these things in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Savior. Amen.